My name is Mark Cruz from Nikon Canada and I'm here with our video on lens selection. In this video, I'm going to talk about telephoto zoom lenses and what some of the differences are between them. Nearly all of Nikon's telephoto zoom lenses have a vibration reduction built in, which compensates for shake introduced into the photo, usually while using longer focal length lenses or when shooting in low light situations such as this. Basically, it works when gyroscopic sensors detect any movement and in instantly counteract it by moving a floating lens assembly, which keeps the image steady. Nikon has a selection of telephoto lenses depending on what your needs are. Many people will start with our entry level 55 to 200 millimeter lens or 55 to 300 millimeter lens, which are lighter and smaller while still providing a long zoom range. When you move up to the 70 to 300 millimeter lens, you're getting the same 300 millimeter focal length as the 55 to 300, but now you have even better build quality and faster autofocus. So for uses like sports photography, it's a little bit better suited. Now before we get into the higher end telephoto lenses, let's have a look at this 55 to 300 millimeter lens. You'll notice that the barrel of the lens shows f4.5 to 5.6. We all know that the f represents the aperture of the lens, which controls the amount of light entering the camera, but why does it seem to be changing here? Well, until you get into Nikon's Pro series of lenses, most zooms have variable apertures. This means that when you're at the wide angle position, either 70 or 55 millimeter, the aperture will be f4.5. But when you zoom into 300 millimeter and the aperture closes down, the maximum aperture you have available is f5.6. The reason for this, it makes the lens smaller, lighter, and generally more economical to produce. When you're in bright outside conditions, having a variable aperture lens won't make much of a difference. But in a situation like a hockey rink, losing light by zooming in doesn't help matters when you're already in a low light environment. So where do we go from here? Well, next we have the 70 to 200 millimeter F4 lens. Right away, you'll notice the aperture is no longer variable. It's fixed at F4 all the way through the zoom range. We've also included an even faster autofocus system and sturdier build quality while still maintaining quality on par with pro Nikkor lenses. Having a constant f4 aperture is good, but to let even more light in would be great, which is why Nikon has also made the 70 to 200 f2.8 lens. This lens is now larger and heavier, but the image quality is top notch. It has a magnesium alloy shell and super fast autofocus system everything you'd expect from a lens that almost every pro has in their bag. Let's do a quick demonstration here in the ring to show what happens when you shoot in a really tough environment with a variable aperture lens, a constant f4 lens, and then finally a constant f2.8 lens. I'm using the Nikon D5300 camera and I'll be using it in aperture priority mode. I'll set the aperture as wide open as I can, ISO to 3200, and we'll see what shutter speeds will be chosen depending on the lens we use. Since the aperture could not open wider than f5.6, the shutter speed was too slow to freeze the motion. To freeze the motion in this case, we'll need to increase our shutter speed. But the only way to do this is to raise our ISO. Generally, this introduces more noise into the photo, which we want to avoid as much as possible. So let's shoot with a constant f4 lens. You can see that because it lets in more light, you can actually get sharper results at the original ISO of 3200. That's because we're essentially doubling the amount of light entering the camera. When we start to use the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens, you'll see that the action is completely stopped. Now, some of you may be thinking that some prime lenses are even faster than the 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8. Why not use those? Well, if you remember back to the first video in this series, we talked about how convenient zoom lenses are. In certain situations, those prime lenses would make a great choice, but specifically for sports, convenience is usually a priority. If you can only shoot from a specific area, being able to zoom in and out from this one spot is key. Have a look at the next video in this series to learn more about what lenses will provide amazing portraits.